Hello, this is a key stage three chemistry video for pure and impure substances. Firstly, what do we mean by pure substances? Well, these are made of one substance only. And again, what do we mean by the word substance? Well, we mean made of one either element or compound only. So made of one element or compound. We could take a look at an example of a pure element so an element would be something like oxygen so we've got a little diagram here of an oxygen tank if we release some of that oxygen we can see that if we were to magnify uh, inside the gas there inside the oxygen gas we would see oxygen atoms only and if we take a look we'll see the oxygen atoms they do exist in pairs that's why we call oxygen gas o2 but you would only find oxygen atoms and that is pure oxygen what about a compound that is a pure substance? We could take a look at a very common example. Here is some water in a container. Now you might think, well, water is H2O, so it's got two different elements in it, and it can't be pure, but actually it is pure, because if we were to zoom in on some of the water in the same way as we did with the oxygen, you would see that we only have water molecules inside the water if it's pure water. So these are two examples of pure substances. One is a compound and one is an element. What about mixtures or impure substances? Well, these are made of more than one substance or two or more substances together. And again, by substances, we mean elements or compounds. And one common example of a mixture is air. Now you might say air is a pure substance or can be a pure substance. However, air is actually a mixture of many different gases. So if we could magnify into some air, we would see molecules of different gases, oxygen, water vapor, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and one or two others. So that's one example of a mixture, a very common example of a mixture. There are others as well. So for example, we have air, as we mentioned, we also have uh, milk is a mixture of proteins, sugars, lipids, and a few other things. We also have seawater, which is a mixture of water and various different salts. Fruit juice is a mixture. And also another example at the end here we have is paint, which is different to the other substances, but all of these are examples of mixtures. For our pure substances, now we've talked about this already, so it's made of one either element or compound only, one substance only. And we have the example of water, which is a compound, but still pure. Oxygen, gold as a random example off the periodic table. And in fact, any element off the periodic table would be a pure substance if it wasn't mixed with anything else. And any single compound would also be a pure substance as well. Now, there's one more thing I want to go through with this or in this video, and that's the idea that pure substances have a single melting and boiling point. What do we mean by this? Well, let's have a look at a graph of something that's uh, melting and boiling. So we take the example of pure water that we have frozen and we are warming up and we can look at a graph like this. Here's the boiling point of water. Here's the melting point of water. And just so we have a little visual reference, we've got some melting uh, water, some melting ice and some boiling water as well. Now, as we would warm up some ice, it would eventually get to zero degrees C and that's when it would start melting. It stays at the same temperature while it's melting and only after it has all melted will the temperature rise further. So there goes the uh, increase in temperature and when it reaches the boiling point, it stays at the same temperature while it all boils and then the temperature rises. But if you look, the melting point and the boiling point for pure water are at zero degrees for melting and 100 degrees for boiling. This is one very specific temperature and can help you identify that the liquid there is actually pure water. What about if we have impure substances? Well, these melt and boil over a range of temperatures. So imagine we have some impure water, for example, had some salt in it. We could do a graph similar to what we had before. We've got the boiling point and melting point there. And the graph would look slightly different in that the temperature would rise, but at the melting point, it's not flat. 
and at the boiling point it's not flat as it was in the last graph. We'll be able to see that the melting point actually happens over a range of temperatures, a little bit below zero and a little bit above zero, and the boiling point also has a range of temperatures as well. The boiling point actually gets a bit higher than 100 degrees and goes on for a little bit more, but the graph is not flat. We have melting and boiling over a range of temperatures. So let's summarize what we have learned in this video. Four pure substances. These contain only one substance or material, which could be an element or a compound. For example, oxygen, water, carbon dioxide I've added there, or hydrogen. So these are examples that are different, but still pure. Um, remember they have specific and single melting and boiling points. And this means that they only boil at a very specific temperature and melt at a specific temperature. And we had a graph that looked like this to help us understand that idea. We can also actually make a note that when we have a specific boiling point or melting point, we can identify the substance based on that boiling point and melting point. So one example, a very common example, is that of water which boils at 100 degrees C and freezes or melts at 0 degrees C. For our impure substances, well, these are when we have mixtures, so we could describe an impure substance as a mixture, but they contain two or more substances, i.e. elements and or compounds. For example, air, seawater, paint or juice, these are all mixtures. And they melt and boil over a range of temperatures and not at one specific temperature. And we had a graph that showed that, that looked a bit like this. So there's our graph for melting and boiling of impure substances. Okay, so this was a summary of what we mean by pure and impure substances and how we can use graphs to identify which one of those two we might have. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.